Hello and welcome back to the PPD YouTube channel folks. My name is Clyde Lindsay from Pixel Pro Displays. It is Twinkle Tips Friday video time and I've got a great little tip and I hope that you guys are excited to learn a little bit more about lyric tracks and editing them and moving things around in X-Lights maybe you didn't know you could actually do. Stay tuned, let's get into it. Well, folks, as you can see here, we have a uh, we have a couple little characters right above right up above us, and they are two characters that are singing the song from Mariah Carey, "All I Want for Christmas Is You." Um, now, usually you have a you have a main character singing, and then you have a backup singer. In this song specifically, you only have two characters, but there might be songs that you have that you have three characters or four characters that you would like to sing and you can notice some background oohs and ahs that don't kind of fit in with the first main lyrics, the main lyrics of the song. Uh, the, the, that main character is already singing. So you have the second character, the backup singer, singing along with that. But then you have a third characters in the background that are also singing the backup vocals that are oohs and ahs and other things like that. Well, I want to show you how you can move some of these lyric tracks around in x lights and it's really really easy so first you have for, it, for instance if we go over the layout tab here if you have three characters in your show i just added one really quick here for today's demo if if you add a third or a fourth character in and you want to add your own third or fourth uh, vocal line uh, everybody does this in their own way but i want to show you how you can add one in now it's very, very easy. If you already have a lyric track or you're doing your own lyric tracks or you're using the Auto Lyric Align website and they're, you're downloading them from there, you will definitely be able to utilize some of the things I show you today on those other lyric tracks that have been created and you can add more into your own sequence on your own. And it is a little confusing. It takes some practice and it does take time. It's not something that you're going to do in five minutes like I'm going to try to do in this video. But hopefully the skills that I share with you are going to get you there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a lyric track. And you can't add a lyric track unless you import one. But we're not importing a lyric track. We're adding a timing line so that we can create it or convert it into a lyric track. And to do that, we'll hover over the timing marks. We'll click on Add Timing Track. We'll click select the empty timing track. And then we'll give it a name. And the name, I like to use Vocal 1, Vocal 2, Vocal 3. You can have uh, main vocalist, you, you can call it whatever you want. I just like to keep them in numerical order. So the main vocalist is always vocal one. I do, uh, I have vocal three here, V-O-C-A-L three. Yeah. You notice the first place that it goes. Anytime you add a new lyric or timing track, it always goes to the top of the list. Just for reference, I'm on my faces view. You can create views using the display elements. That's a whole nother video. But if I come over to my view and I'm on my faces view and I want to move this, I want to organize this so it's sorted, it won't let me move it. And that's because it's hard coded for the views to be in the exact same order as they are in the master view. So what you need to do is go to your master view in display elements. We need to come up here where it says vocal three. You need to click and drag and move that to the bottom. So now it didn't go quite to the bottom but I can grab the bottom one and move it up one. So now you have vocals one, vocals two, and vocal three. And I spelled vocals without the S. Uh, but any in any event, now I can go back to my view, go back to my faces, and boom, vocal one, vocal two, vocal three. So there's a little bit of interesting information about the vocals that you need to have. I want to show you that you can quickly convert this timing track, because that's all it is right now, and, and all we're going to do to convert this into from a timing track into a lyric track or a track that can be read by the faces or the characters, we're going to hit the lowercase letter T. So we'll put a second timing mark. Let's put a third one down just, just, for, just for the heck of it. And you've got a couple timing marks here. And you can click on them individually. And notice how it highlights, just like if I open this up and I show you this group, if I select a faces effect, Look how it highlights this line, that red color there. 
it does the exact same thing, but it only does it with purple. So a timing track is an awful lot like a effect where you can move things back and forth. And if you hadn't realized that, you can tell just by clicking on them. You want to make it look like even more of an effect? Well, just imagine if you double click, what, what can happen is it can play that part of the song if you double click on that section, or if you hold the shift key down, it will open up the enter new label or the edit label dialog. Now here we can put a word in here like all, I don't know, just the word all, and look at that. Now doesn't this look remarkably like a regular basic x lights effect? Moving lyric tracks around and editing lyric tracks and copying and pasting lyric tracks works very, very much like editing and moving and and uh, adjusting your effects whenever they're in the sequence screen. So keep that in mind. Now let's get to the conversion part. So in order to open this up and get multiple layers, so we have one, two, three layers here in this lyric track. To do this, we have to hover over top of the word, we have to right click, and we have to break down the phrase. Once you break down the phrase, it gives you a second line to work within. So look at the first line, it's green. Look at the first line, it's green. The second line is kind of orangish. And then the third line is pink. Okay, so the pink line is where the phonemes are, and that's what we need to get to to expand that. And to do that, all we're going to do is select the broken down words, the individual words, that's what these are, the orange is broken down words. We're going to break down the word. Fair warning, I've already done this. If you click the button right now to break down the word into a, into phonemes, what's going to happen is X lights. if you haven't done this, will open up the lyric track directory. And in the directory, which is included with your XLights download, it goes in and it opens up. It may take a moment or two, like maybe 10 or 15 seconds. It's going to load the XLights lyric track library and it will in all the future instances that you're doing within that sequence setting it, or, or that sequencing session, we'll say, that that lyric track library will be open. So you're not going to see it here, but you will see it when you do it. See, it looks instant for me, but it wasn't. It might not be instant for you, but it only happens one time. Now, if I close X lights and I reopen X lights and I reopen the sequence and I go to go back into this vocal uh, breakdowns and so forth, it will have to load the, the lyric directory back again. So it's always dependent on if you have it open or not. Now you can notice hey, look, this just looks like effects. This works, this works exactly like effects do. And you can come in here, if I zoom in, you can come in here and you can manipulate the location of where the oo sound starts and the ul sound. See, this is this part of the timing track, this part of this lyric track basically is not a word, it's the phoneme or the sound that is made whenever x Lite sees it, it displays this sound on the character space. That's why if you watch the other video that we did, it's important to verify that your character's lip movement matches with the actual phoneme that's about to be said because as X lights plays the faces effect, it's going to look and say, oh, this is, uh, this is the AI movement, ah, and this is another one. This is the ETC movement, and this is the O movement. And x lights is going to read across, and it's going to say, hey, these are what I should be portraying. And that's how the lyric tracks get converted over into the faces effect, because that's how it reads it. And that's how the faces effect works with the character and how they look. So watch that video up there that I showed you earlier. It will work you through if you have problems with your faces and you can go and recreate or redraw the lip movements so that they match the different phonemes such as here's the L, this would be the letter O, and, and you can test this, you can test this. Let's put a little, little, we'll grab a character here and we'll have him read that line. So here is, we'll have him read vocal track three and Here's our third one. So he's going ooh and ul. And that's how that works. The effect is reading what the phoneme says to display. And so it displays it on the character. And the movement, the quick movement through the song is what shows you the animation and allows the character to sing along. 
now I want to show you that you can do different things with these lyric tracks. If we have them deselected, if we zoom out here, you can grab them, click and drag. That's We call that lassoing. Click and drag, and it lassoes us to select them. Now, if you have a timing mark selected, you can't click and drag up here. It won't let you do that. It's the same thing down here in x -Lights. You can click and drag just like this if no timing tracks are selected. But the moment that you select any timing track, click and drag does not work. And notice there's no timing marks right here in this selected area. So you can't even click on the screen without getting like a square specific block versus a cell or a group of timed areas. So just the way the timing tracks work, but it's also how the effects work and the lyric tracks work because lyric tracks are just like effects. They're very similar to effects. They're just different. They perform a different operation. So now if you wanted to copy and paste, you can do that. Now I showed you, uh, or I showed you that you can, you can click and drag and, and select all these. But if you zoom in and you hold the shift key down, and you have none of your timing marks selected here, obviously, you can click and drag these and move these across the timing grid as long as there's nothing to obstruct them. Now, this whole line here we created, you can move them all the way. You can grab them all and you can, oh, move it all the way down there, right? Okay, and you can you can uh, select them all. You can delete. You, can, you don't have to keep everything there. You can hit the delete key and it will delete it off of the screen. In fact, you want to see some, some something really interesting that will help you is if you're trying to create multiple timing tracks for, for the third or fourth character and you want them to have their own vocal line across the entire thing, this is how you're going to do it. And you can easily, if the two backup singers are singing the same thing, you can easily come up here and just copy and paste the exact, uh, and I'm right clicking, I'm hit copy, and if I zoom in here and I select, no timing marks here, if I click on or select the area, the same starting location, it doesn't make a physical designation that you're there, but if you right click and you paste, now it's pasted the exact phoneme. And if we come back here, we grab our lyric track over here, and we move it here, and here's our third character, you can clearly see that now that character is singing the exact same thing. There's no main words. There's no broken down. There's no main phrases. No broken down words. There's only the phone names, and that is incredibly helpful whenever it comes to understanding how lyric tracks work. Now, what if you have just a couple of oohs and ahs and mmms that you want to create? Well. If you know how lyric tracks are broken down, you would know that you could zoom in here and you can see these are the phonemes. Well, what does the oo sound mean? Well, the oo sound is the o. Well, we kind of it kind of goes without saying that it might be the letter o. Check this out. What if I right click, if I select a timing mark, a phoneme, I copy it and I come over here and we knew right here from this area here, we pasted it and we knew from this area to this area here, this is somebody going oo we could come in here, select the timing track, hold the shift key down, double click, and we can change this to the capital letter O. And what happens here? If we come over here, watch this one character over here. Oh, look, he's got the little uh, letter O going on there. So you happen to notice that it did say shimmer on it before. Let, what happens if we go in here and we uh, add a dash S-H-I-M-M-E-R. This is my favorite thing to do, by the way. If a character or a singer is, is uh, as they're vocalizing, as they're singing, uh, using vibrato, like, oh, you know, if you get that sound from them, you add this little shimmer to it, and uh, it works really well. It works really well individually. Watch this little O. See how it's kind of flashing? It's pulsating. It works really, really good whenever you're using this on like a coro face, we'll say. However, there is a suppress shimmer over here so that whenever it plays, it doesn't, you see it's not doing the little O uh, because if you have a a matrix singing face, the face doesn't shimmer exactly the same and it, it does something a little different and it may not be something that you want to happen. You can suppress the shimmer for like a matrix face if you want to. So that's another option for you. 
but just know that you can come in and you can quickly add those phonemes like um like uh, uh, like whenever you hear the character say, mm, you can come over here and find, you can look up above and find and copy the, the MBP. If you don't know what they are, you can copy them and paste them. And now if we select on our little character here, let's uh, go over here. Uh, we'll grab our uh, faces there and we'll stretch it out a little bit. Let's get rid of that fade in and fade out. And... Uh, we look at the letter MBP. Well, now you see the character going, hmm, because the M face on our character is different than the rest face. So now you, could, now you can see him. That's the letter M as opposed to there's the rest face there. So if, we, if you move it over here and you say M, mm, that's, that's the difference between the rest face and the M mm face. So, uh, and some characters can have it, and some characters it's not as, a, uh, it's not as apparent. So that might not be something specific. Uh, if you wanted to have different inflictions between your oohs and your ahs, that, well, then obviously the AI or the ah, the AI movement, the A movement, which is your big mouth, ah, like ah, um, you could come up here, you could change this to capital A, capital I, click OK, and now you've got the big wide mouth movement. You see him right there. I keep pointing at my screen. I forgot he's up there for you. So, so, so far, we're able to edit these tracks. We're able to move them around. If you wanted your character singing multiple things the same, you could just select only, only the phonemes, the lower ones, and apply them to the lower ones and copy and paste. Basically, they're already done. And you can add in in specific places wherever you need to to exemplify any of that extra sequencing that you're looking for for your third and fourth characters. That's everything I have for you today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope this video was helpful, informative, and saved you a little bit of time and frustration when using the X-Lite software. If you liked the video, please give us a huge thumbs up. If you haven't done yet, so hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell for notifications so you never miss any of the content that we produce. Every other week, we're putting webinars out where every week we're doing these Twinkle Tip Friday videos, and we also do a ton of sequencing for the community. Guys, if you have any questions, put them in the comments section down below if there's something that you'd like to learn something you don't understand if you if there's something you really want to see let me know i'm happy to do a video on it if you want some cool shirts just like this with the ppd logo on them and we have our brand new shirts the twinkles of titan and we have pixel me this here this shirt is awesome it's so soft and comfortable that's the uh, pixel me this shirt and then the other one is a little more cottony a little heavier and if you want to try them out we have those on our ppd website you can head over there pixelprodisplays.com go to the store and click on the link to our gear. Please tune in again next week for another installment of Twinkle Tip Friday videos. This is Clyde signing out. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy, and we will see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. It is Friday, and that means it's time for some Twinkle Tips. So let's get into this week's lesson. Le lesson? Lesson. This week's lesson. <laughs> Take two. With purple. So if you notice, a timing track is awfully lot. Uh, an awful. <laughs> awfully lot. A, a timing track is awfully light. Uh, <laughs> I can't spit this out. Let me try that again. Um, so. If you also would like to consider getting a PPD, cool PPD, the gear, you can order these two shirts. We have two different ones, Twinkles of, Twinkles of Titan, Twinkles of Titan. If you want cool shirts just like this, we have two of them behind me right here. We have the, uh, we have the uh, Twinkles of and remember the bell for notifications so that you never miss one of our Twinkle Tip Friday videos or our weekly live webinar, or not weekly, but <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, cut, take two. <laughs>